Not by my watch. Well, I got the official city gavel. That's what counts. She's here. Not enough. Let me uh, call this uh, regular meeting of the North Rock City Council to order, and uh, Miss Whitby, ask if you would call the roll, please. Yes, sir. Gibson. Just present. Bryant. Present. Robinson. Here. Thomas. Here. Barry. Here. Parker. Here. Height. Here. And Witcher. Present. McCorm is present. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Whitby. Can I ask that we stand for the prayer to be led by Alderman Thomas, followed by the pledge by Alderwoman Robinson? Our Father in heaven, as we bow in thy presence, again, we want to thank thee for all the many blessings of life. We're thankful for the opportunity that we have. We'd ask that the things that we do be in accordance with thy will. Thankful for the people who've come, who are interested in the city. We would ask that when we forgive, that when we fail thee, that you forgive us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So Second. Motion made and seconded uh, that, the, uh, that the minutes of the previous meeting be approved and submitted on the motion, Ms. Whitby. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Uh, let me uh, ask for a blanket motion on the communications. Move. Is there a second? Second. second. Any council member uh, would care to either one of the one through seven, it appears, to be pulled? Number. I believe number three we wanted to pull just for read the title only. All right. Well, uh, any other alderman or alderwoman on the motion? Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, wait a minute. Which one did you want? Oh, one at three. One, two, two four, five, four. six, and seven. Uh, on the motion? Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Number three by title only. Please. This is an email that was faxed to my office from Alderman Gibson. It is a uh, email letter to Mr. W.A. Anderson regarding his complaint and Avon Phillips Jr. is the respondent uh, regarding a refund. Mayor, the, um, after our last council meeting, I met with Mr. Phillips, who was not aware of the complaint, Mr. Junior Phillips, and uh, made him aware of it. Uh, Mr. Susky and I had a conversation with him on Friday morning on the phone, and he advised us that he had reviewed the details of it and that uh, this was done by an employee that is no longer employed by him and that he was sending a person a check uh, to pay that entire fee and also, I believe, a business card, which if you ever needed a free tow, he would have one in the city of North Little Rock. So, yes, uh, I think the lesson learned here is that perhaps when we have a complaint, we probably need to go to the, to the head person at that company, whoever that company is, rather than talking to an employee. And I think that I learned this lesson also in this. So moving, accept and file. Second. Is there a second on that? Second. second. On the motion, accept and file. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, let me, uh, uh, our, uh, our coach to the Norval Rock uh, High School girls basketball team, Daryl Primple. Daryl, are you here? Yeah. Good to see you. Who do we have here? This is Peyton. Peyton. Uh, why don't I ask you ladies, if you could, to kind of stand right over here, if we could. Y'all mind? And, uh, and, and let me, uh, first of all, by way of introduction, I want us to give a warm welcome to the state champions, uh, North Little Rock. Now, if you all want to just kind of, I don't, don't normally tell people to stand in front of the press, but what we've got is a camera right over here. So if you all can kind of pan around over here and stand in front of our Times and Democrat Gazette and let us get Mayor, you from that. you got the big camera for the back. Yeah, I don't know how close they can get. Well, since we already got them moving, you all just kind of move on over there if you would. Uh, 
and, uh, and, and let me, first of all, introduce us to the coach, Daryl Fremple, and uh, what was our... This is Peyton. And, that's right, Peyton. <laughs> uh, Daryl is a first year at the, uh, uh, as the coach of the ladies, uh, the, the Charging Wildcats uh, basketball team, and, uh, and, and we want to, first of all, you know, a year late, welcome him uh, to North Little Rock, but more so tell him how proud we are, not only of his job, and I will let you introduce uh, the remainder of your staff and, uh, and the ladies, uh, how excited we are to be able to uh, recognize how, uh, how these ladies over here uh, uh, on about, what, three, about a month ago, I guess, uh, a month ago, uh, helped us uh, survive a variety of coronary attack <laughs> as uh, Fort Smith Northside uh, tried to make, one lady tried to make a few three, free throws right at the last. And I'm sure all of y'all remember those free throws. And then I think there was one shot uh, in addition to that. Uh, and you know, divine providence plus a lot of skill of the young ladies here uh, brought home the, uh, the state uh, championship trophy over at Altel Arena. And, uh, and there were literally hundreds, uh, perhaps even thousands, several thousands of folks uh, that were excited about that. I know that you know, I had a chance uh, when I was a junior to be a part of uh, a state tournament championship on the boys' side. And, and these are memories that will be with us, uh, and, and particularly y'all, uh, forever. So I wanted to invite you up along with your coach uh, and tell you how excited this community is about what you did uh, and how proud we are of the effort and how, we, how much we look forward uh, to uh, a repeat next year. So you set the bar high, and, uh, and, and thank you again. And uh, we're going to make a presentation before we do. Daryl, I'd like to turn it over to you and introduce your, your uh, coaching staff. Okay, uh, I was assisted this year by Cheryl Bean, uh, who's a North Little Rock grad, and uh, Sheila Smith uh, were both, both my assistants. Uh, we had an outstanding year. We got some wonderful kids. Uh, we got some dragging in here because they had job interviews today. So, uh, but uh, like I said, we were very lucky. And uh, if you wanted a group of kids to represent North Little Rock, these kids probably did the best job I've ever seen of that this year. Uh, everywhere we went, they talked about how classy and uh, good individual people we have, and uh, it's something to make North Little Rock very proud of. Is these kids. All right, let's give one more. Break. exact date, which is March 11th, almost uh, one month to go, less one day, uh, that, uh, you know, that, that I have an opportunity to share days with as mayor of this town. And so I'm going to read this for Brittany and then call each of your names uh, that uh, is a duplicate. Uh, this is a, probably the first time that we've had as many people that needed to share a day uh, as we do, but I can tell you that each of you made that day, uh, again, one of the most exciting that this community remembers. So Brittany Rochelle. Uh, if you want to come forward when I call your name and let me just <coughs> hand you this that says uh, that I, Patrick Hayes, Mayor of North Little Rock, do proclaim the 11th day of March 2006 is Brittany Rochelle Day in honor of her winning, their winning, the 2006 Class 5A State Championship. So I'm going to call your names, but I'm going to read this for Brittany, and, uh, and each of you have a duplicate. So Brittany, thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate it. Shatona Dobbins? Shantae. How is it? Shantae? Shantae. Well, okay. I knew I was going to. Congratulations, Shantae. <laughs> Sophia? Piggy. Sophia Piggy Day. Sophia, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Rachel Parsley? Thank you, Rachel. Shay? Shay Scott. Where is Shay Scott? Congratulations, Shay. Thank you. <laughs> Alyssa Walden? Thank you, Alyssa. <laughs> well, now, this has got to be a unique person. Come on up, Gabby Coleman. Where is Gabby? <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Tiffany Key. Tiffany, thank you. Jasmine Turner. All right. 
Thank you, Jasmine. We thank you. Ashley Yielding. All right, Ashley, thank you. Lashonia, come on up, Lashonia West. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. She had to work. Uh, Malaya, Malaya Legs. Come on, Malaya, thank you very much. Victoria Thomas. All right. Candace Sherrins. Candace, is that right? Thank you. Michelle Hitchcock. Thank you, Michelle. Desmond Murray. Thank you, Desmond. Amanda Pearson. Uh, Abby Riesmont. All right. And uh, Elizabeth Scott. All right. Uh, and coach, we want to make it. We didn't. We didn't want just to, the players to be, be a part of it because indeed this is a team. So Daryl Fremple, thank you, Daryl. <laughs> and Cheryl Bing, sure. there we go. Grace, Billy, uh, or is Marilyn here? Marilyn Hall from Young the North Hall, Rock. Sure. Marilyn, are you here? Okay, come on up, Marilyn. I see you. Uh, let me turn the microphone over to you for some comments, real quick. Good evening. I'm here to tell you that North Shore Animal League America is coming to North Little Rock again. North Shore is based in New York. is the largest animal rescue group in the country. And for the last five years, they've, they've taken uh, their large mobile adoption units across the country on a tour for life. They stop in different cities and uh, join other rescue groups to promote the adoption of homeless animals and also to promote the importance of spaying and neutering. We have been on their tour for the last four years, the smallest city on the tour and the only stop in Arkansas. They go to San Francisco, uh, Sacramento, Los Angeles, Houston, Dallas, um, Chicago, Miami, and right there in the middle is North Little Rock, Arkansas. And the first year they called to ask if they could come, I said, well, how did you hear about North Little Rock? And somehow they had heard about the work we're doing in North Little Rock and our adoption rate, the, the uh, importance we put on getting animals adopted. I've asked other animal rescue groups in the area to join us. They will be here Thursday, okay. April 13th. That's this Thursday. We will be at Lakewood Village from 1 to 6. I'm sorry, from 11 to 6. And I'm just hoping that a lot of you will come out and meet the people from New York. We'll have lots going on. They're sending their dog trainer, whom I'm told is called the dog whisperer, and is supposed to be very, very good at rehabilitating dogs and training them. So if any of you have problem animals, just come Thursday, and he'll be glad to talk to you and maybe give you some ideas about what you can do to train your animal. We'll have some lots of information to give out, some free gifts for, for uh, animal owners. Also, of course, as always, some beautiful animals that need homes. So this is really an honor for North Little Rock and it's a recognition of the work that, um, that under the direction of Billy Grace, he's gonna be mad that I've mentioned his name, but 
uh, the work that he's done and all of you in passing some really tough ordinances and a group of animal control officers that are willing to go out and enforce this, those ordinances. And I can never get up and speak about animals without getting up on my soapbox a little bit. But there are so many homeless animals in this country. And until you see a litter of puppies or kittens in a dumpster or along the side of the road or in a garbage bag thrown out someplace, you don't really realize the problem. But we see that. And every city in the country sees that. And unless we can convince people to be responsible pet owners, to keep their pets restrained, and to also have them spayed or neutered, we're really fighting a losing battle. But North Little Rock is, I think, gaining on the problem. We're trying hard. So uh, again, just come out and um, be a part of this on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marilyn. We sure appreciate the work you and, uh, and all the folks do that are teamed up out at the uh, animal uh, control with uh, Friends of the Animals as well as the staff and, and certainly a lot of interested folks to keep our record going about not having to euthanize any adoptable animals. So thanks a lot. And Billy, y'all keep up the good work. We appreciate it. Uh, David Sink. David uh, is uh, one that uh, many of us will remember has been here before. Uh, David is uh, a professor with the University of Arkansas at Little Rock and is working on uh, a, uh, a report regarding homeless, uh, a homelessness plan. And David, if I could turn it over to you, uh, I know you've passed out some information and uh, please share it with the council. Thank you, Mayor Hayes, very much. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am representing uh, a steering committee of 25 members who were appointed last year by the mayors of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and Jacksonville as they passed resolutions giving us the go-ahead to d develop a, a master plan uh, a, that is a 10-year plan to deal with chronic homelessness. Uh, and we appreciate that vote of support last summer. Many of you will remember that uh, Mr. Mangano, the head of the Interagency Council on Homelessness uh, for the federal government, uh, came to Little Rock to recognize that milestone, realizing that we didn't have a final plan yet but that we were headed in the right direction. And I think this last seven months has been an effort to accomplish that. And I think with, with some effort, we've uh, made some progress. I, have, uh, I would like to recognize uh, uh, Alderwoman Robinson, who's been very active on the, on the steering committee. And we appreciate very much her representation of the city of North Little Rock. Also, there are at least four other members uh, whose offices or who work for some kind of agency in North Little Rock. So your city has been well represented on the steering committee. It is truly a partnership among the three cities, particularly between the cities of North Little Rock and Little Rock. I'd like to recognize two people from the steering committee who are with me tonight. Sandra Wilson is sitting back here, the head of the Arkansas Supportive Housing Network. Wave your hand there. And Thurman Chambers is head of the Union Rescue Mission. And they both have activities here in North Little Rock as well as Little Rock and in the county. And I appreciate their efforts and their presence here tonight. It's important for me to take just a few moments to talk a little bit about the background of homelessness and the issues that we face in this city, just like other cities across the country are facing. Homelessness is, yes, a, a, a public safety problem, but it's also an economic development problem. It's also a very human problem and is one that I think that if you look at it from either the perspective of sociology or political science or accounting or governmental budgeting, you realize that it's an issue we can't avoid. It's an issue that we must deal with. There are among us from 1,700 to 3,000 at some different times of the year homeless people who are without permanent housing, who are often without jobs, who are substance abuse violators, who are mentally ill, who for a variety of reasons have lost their support network or have found themselves alone on the streets of our metropolitan area. These are the people we're truly reaching out to help. We certainly understand that like the general population, some homeless people uh, are a little hard to take sometimes because they're, they're human like the rest of us. Uh, they sometimes do things we wish they wouldn't do, but if you realize the level of desperation that they face, and the problems they encounter, and the difficulty for some of them to interact with a network of services, then you begin to realize how much of a problem we have. 
But we don't see it just as a problem. We see it as a, a significant opportunity that is going to take a, a lot of work by agencies that deliver services to the homeless. We see this as truly a collaborative effort that's going to take the efforts of both North Little Rock and Little Rock uh, to pull together and provide services and provide support for the variety of providers that are in the community. Uh, in fact, one of the challenges that we've had the most difficulty wrestling with, but I think one we've made considerable progress on, has been the coming together of agencies that haven't always talked together or who haven't always worked together in a collaborative format. In other words, they're starting to look at things they can do together rather than compete for funding, rather than do things separately in their own little silos without considering other partners in, in the community. Uh, our continual planning meetings and the various meetings around the city, cities have, uh, have really helped them see that there are, are, are ways they can work together. Funding is always a problem, and frankly, funding from the federal government, particularly HUD, is not going up, it's going down. So we have a real challenge, some of which we're going to have to meet locally. In front of you is a, an outline of the, of the priority strategies listed in, in first phase, second phase, and third phase. These are uh, pretty much the outline of the final plan that will be finished over the next uh, two months, and hopefully we'll be back in the summer to present a final plan with action steps, with evaluation, and with budget. In other words, we're seeking to write a very specific plan that will be a blueprint for our efforts together. But I wanted to update you. Um, at the request of the Board of Directors of the City of Little Rock, we did this two weeks ago, and um, now we're here tonight because we want to present our two major metropolitan uh, or municipal government partners with uh, progress to let you know that we are working hard in your name. And I would like to talk very briefly about especially the, those in the first phase, and then I'll br talk briefly about second and third phase. You'll notice that these are two-year phases and require um, a lot of uh, effort as well, <coughs> as, well as funding. Um, if you have questions, uh, I would be glad to field them at that time, at the end. Um, first of all, under the priority strategy, the first phase, which starts this year and goes until two, 2008, uh, we feel a significant need to bridge between the completion of the plan and the action steps, and we are, as a result, proposing that there be an Office of Homeless Services developed, which would not necessarily be in Little Rock or North Little Rock, but be a partnership between the two cities, uh, would not necessarily be a government office as well, but would be uh, perhaps funded initially by local government, but would represent the efforts of all the providers and governments and others who are like the university or like churches and faith-based efforts who are involved in, in the delivery of services. What that will do is help us continue to develop the network or the, or the collaboration among those partners. Uh, naturally, we're going to need funding, and so uh, we'll be competing for scarce funds that many other worthy uh, purposes will be competing with us. We realize that. But we will create a development plan that will uh, generate funding from grants, from foundations, from donations, <coughs> and from local governments and, and state government. Um, probably the, the keystone of the first phase is the development of a day resource center. Uh, again, we don't have any location for that yet, but the purpose of that would be primarily to establish an outpost for homeless people who are homeless or on the streets to come and be uh, assisted uh, through uh, an analysis of what their needs are and then a, a referral to the appropriate agency. Not that that would be the only place that could happen, but this would be a highly visible place where homeless could come and, and be assisted. Uh, at the same time, it would serve as a day resource in, the, in that, as you are aware, many homeless are discharged or let out from the overnight emergency shelters early in the morning. and are on the streets all day until those shelters reopen in the evening. So it would also be a drop-in center to assist them with things like a mailbox, uh, with showers, with uh, washer and dryer, and with uh, food to eat. Uh, this is a not intended to be a permanent uh, solution, but more to assist them in moving fairly quickly through the network of services into permanent housing. We think that one of the most important parts of our plan will be 
efforts toward developing a housing first strategy which will involve placement of homeless people in housing with wraparound services. In other words, rather than waiting for them to graduate, if you will, from various programs, we will try to get them into permanent housing as they create a, a basis to stay there. In other words, as they're trained for jobs, as they're <coughs> off of drugs, as, as they finish men mental health treatment, uh, as they are discharged from hospitals or jail, <coughs> we will establish an effort to get them into permanent housing because ultimately solving homelessness means getting all of our residents into housing. <coughs> it's not always easy and it's not always a direct route, we realize. But the housing first approach, while controversial in some places, has worked well in many cities and we are attempting to start that in the first phase. Um, otherwise, steps five, six, and seven uh, depict the network of supportive services that we're talking about to include training so that these people will become uh, taxpayers rather than uh, a drain on the tax base. You can see then in priorities two and three, or the second phase and the third phase, that we extend those seven efforts in the first phase. But I want to draw your attention just to two particularly. Uh, one is we hope eventually to establish a homeless trust and establish a board of directors or a trust that will be independent of both city governments but will work in their name and the names of those other nonprofits in the state who are involved in dealing with this issue. Uh, that trust would be responsible not only for governance responsibilities but also in doling out funds that were raised through the development effort. And we think that that can be an independent, although highly collaborative effort with the city governments. In other words, we're not placing this all on city government at all. We're asking city governments to be partners, but not the dominant forces necessarily. And finally, um, we see that the, the, as I said about housing first, we see that a long-term answer to providing an adequate supply of housing, not only for homeless people, but for poor people, is to make a, a strong effort to build affordable housing in our communities. Uh, Little Rock and North Little Rock, like almost every metropolitan area in this country, lacks good affordable housing and that is one area we will focus on heavily. That's a very quick summary I realize uh, but I would be glad to field questions mayor if, if that is appropriate. Sure. Uh, any council member have any uh, questions? David uh, we certainly appreciate you and the members of the task force uh, commission uh, working uh, uh, in this direction it's again it's one that we recognize there's a lot of need and uh, and and we hope to be a partner as we uh, move forward in trying to vigorously uh, uh, try to deal with, uh, with, with the issue of homelessness and, and the input that uh, you're giving us, I'm sure, will give us some guideposts to make those moves. Thank you, Mayor. We really appreciate North Little Rock's support. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, let me go ahead, uh, uh, before we go into the special call, uh, Joe Gertsch, uh, uh, and this could deal with one of the pieces of legislation that I would intend uh, to go right into the special call after Mr. Gertsch's presentation. Joe, you want to come to the microphone and let's, let's make this as, as high pointed as we can. We spent a lot of time last council meeting. Yes, sir. I'll move as quickly as possible. Uh, Mayor Hayes has asked me to discuss with you um, some of the options that we would have to purchase power uh, that we've received in the RFP process. And before I move into that, I'd like to discuss just a little bit about how we purchase power today. As everyone realizes, we're, we have a um, purchase power agreement with, uh, originally with Duke Energy Trading and Marketing and now with Constellation. And under that contract, we buy power with a fixed price of $37.95 per megawatt hour. That is an energy only rate, and it's a single part pr uh, pricing. There is no capacity charge uh, under the current contract. So that means it doesn't really matter what our peak uh, demand is throughout the summer or throughout the year. Uh, it doesn't affect our pricing. Only the energy price goes to what we ultimately pay. The price includes transmission service, and uh, DETM also acts as our agent to acquire transmission. Uh, and they also maintain the control area for us. <clears throat> and they provide all of our power needs 
net of what the Murray Hydro generates and uh, ultimately in the future uh, net of what our landfill gas facility will generate as well. So what are the, uh, the advantages of the uh, DETM contract? First of all, a single part energy rate is a very simplistic <coughs> approach to buying power and I will share with you that is not the approach that most uh, electric utilities utilize in order to buy their power but it's a it's a simplistic approach and it's easy to understand and we have a fixed energy cost that means we're not subject to any changes in the energy market uh, nor are we subject to any fuel risk so if the price of natural gas has gone up as it has under the current contract our price remained the same as the market for energy into uh, our area went up uh, our price still remained the same so as a consequence we have achieve significant savings under this present contract as opposed to being under one where we were uh, actively involved in the marketplace. Um, again, uh, the Duke contract provides uh, all our requirements net of Murray Hydro. There's no capacity charge. Uh, we essentially have no transmission risk. So if, uh, if Duke goes out and decides to buy power from any number of different resources and for some reason uh, that transmission is cut or becomes unavailable. We don't bear any of that risk. All that risk goes to Duke. Uh, also, Duke uh, is responsible for losses, and there are about four to six percent losses over the transmission system. Duke picks those up for us, and also Duke provides all the other uh, ancillary services that accompany transmission. So how does Duke supply the city of North Little Rock? Duke has acquired uh, contractual rights to some combined cycle gas generation that is located in Hot Springs. Um, and we essentially put in a, uh, a transmission request and we have firm transmission rights to that <coughs> generation. Now, that generation for a large percentage of the time is out of the money. And by out of the money, I mean Duke can go into the marketplace and in many cases buy power cheaper than they can by generating it through the plant in Hot Springs. So that's what they do. That's the approach they take. The, the gas plant that's located in Hot Springs is a backstop, if you will. And then they will uh, purchase financial hedges in order to limit their fuel exposure for that particular plant. So that's our backstop. That's their backstop. That's the upper end of what they expect to pay for power and they make their money by going to the market when the market's cheaper and buying it there. Uh, in addition to that, they maintain for us a load control, uh, uh, load only control area. And there are certain advantages uh, for Duke and for the city of North Little Rock as well to having our own control area. And those advantages all relate back to transmission service and some of the penalties that could be involved uh, if we uh, don't fall, follow specific uh, NERC reliability criteria. And having the control area also allows us, or allows Duke, to self-provide some of the transmission services that we would otherwise have to purchase from Entergy. All right, let's the, sort of uh, hit the high points if we can. We don't want to. Okay. At our last uh, council meeting, we pr presented a number of proposals that we had received from uh, the RFP process. Um, with the exception of, of, of the fixed price proposals, most of those proposals entertained us purchasing power in a mode that is different from the way that we purchase it today. All of those ulterior methods involve a certain amount of risk that we would have to take on in order to uh, purchase power. Now I've, I've laid out these particular methods here from if you look at the top of, of, of the sheet you're looking at the higher cost methods and with the lower cost going towards the bottom. Likewise if you look at that the, the lowest risk uh, method is at the top so the high cost is associated with low risk. That's because they're paying that they're charging us for that risk premium that they're taking on. Um, <coughs> in addition to uh, the other uh, proposals that I listed on the other page, 
We also have two proposals that essentially allow us to buy individual capacity. And under that particular scenario, we would have to, to essentially take on the risk of filling all of our requirements above uh, an individual capacity pro proposal. Uh, and I'll just, I'll briefly just skip over that. So the short of, of the proposals, if you will, is that there is a risk versus reward situation involved with each one of these proposals. And if we want a fixed price, then there's a risk premium associated with fixed price. And if we ask a proposer or a bidder to provide us with a fixed power proposal, then we're paying a premium in order for them to assume that risk. There's energy market risk. Uh, you know, the price of power can go up and down. And if Duke is buying power uh, from the marketplace, then they're, they're taking on that risk of buying that power in the marketplace. In addition to that, there's capacity risk. If they have predicted what our uh, ultimate demand is going to be during the summer peak, if we exceed that ultimate demand, then they will be short on capacity. They've taken on that risk. And in addition to that, they take on transmission risk. Uh, if they're buying from the marketplace, they're pointing to different resources all the time. And when they do that, they don't know with absolute certainty that transmission is going to be, a, be available or that it could be cut for some reason or another. That's transmission risk. And in addition to that, um, they are taking on fuel risk, and that they mitigate through financial hedges. What I'm showing you in this graph is the 2005 prices for on-peak and off-peak energy that's delivered into the energy control area. The red depicts the uh, on-peak price, the blue being the off-peak. On peak price being the price of power from the hour ending at 7 o'clock in the morning to the hour ending at 11 o'clock at night, and the off peak being the other hours of the day. Now, I've tried to indicate some of the uh, issues that are events that took place during 2005, and I've discussed these previously with you, such as the der derailment associated with uh, Burlington Northern and uh, Union Pacific. Then there's Hurricane uh, Rita, Hurricane Katrina, and the impact on natural gas prices. So if you just look at the graph itself, you can see that what we have here is a perfect storm. We have the ultimate situation for increasing the price of wholesale power. We had a situation where we lost uh, a considerable amount of our gas supply. Uh, and then on top of that, we lost the ability to get coal into uh, the coal power plants here. So that the gas supply drove up the cost of, of peak power uh, during the fall and winter months. And if you look at the very uh, end of, of the graph where you see the off-peak power, off-peak power is typically the, you know, the, when the power is cheapest, but there it's high. And the reason that it is is because all the base load generation, the coal generation, wasn't available to generate power during the off-peak hours, and they had to rely on gas to do it. Let me see if I can bring us around real quick, Joe. Uh, essentially, uh, I think you presented uh, you know, exactly what you know, we're faced with, and that is whether or not, and, and I want to kind of bring us back to the legislation, so you know, unless there's some real top points that you want to make, you know, I was going to go ahead and go to this resolution. Uh, essentially, it's saying we need, we, you know, we're asking the, the city council to let us know that, uh, that, you know, our consideration, your consideration, the electric department's evaluation of the proposals, uh, you know, that we, we endorse a change. Uh, in other words, a change in the evaluation. Uh, of all of the proposals and all parts of the proposal. That's basically what I understand your resolution, our resolution to say. Is that? That's correct. Uh, with that, let me just see if there's any final quick comments that you want to make, and then I'll ask, see if any council member has any questions, and then, then I'll go ahead and, and we'll go into the uh, special call. Well, I, I would just share with you that there are risks associated with every aspect of delivering power to the city of North Little Rock. We can take on some of those risks ourselves and reduce our cost of wholesale power. Now, in doing that, we can mitigate those risks by doing things that we haven't done before. And essentially what we're coming to you today is to kind of um, give you a, a preview of what you might see here in the, in the near future 
as to how we might propose delivering power to the city of North Little Rock. And, and obviously what I assume uh, as we go through this that, that our recommendation, not assume, I know our recommendation will be is what we think will be the lowest, way, lowest cost to our customers that we can provide power. Exactly. Uh, just realizing that there is risk with that low More power. risk than what we presently have. That's correct. Uh, with that, any council member? Uh, Joe, thank you. Uh, why don't you just sort of, well, just hang in the neighborhood. I'm sure you will. Ms. Whitby, would you please read the special call? Yes, sir. This is a letter dated April 6, 2006. Honorable members of the City Council regarding special council meeting. Dear members of the City Council, this is to advise that we have called a special council meeting of the North Little Rock City Council for 7.05 p.m. on April 10, 2006 at City Hall Council Chambers, North Little Rock, Arkansas. The following will be on the agenda. One, a resolution authorizing the North Little Rock Electric Department to negotiate a purchase power contract with a wholesale power rate structure, providing a capacity and variable energy charge, and for other purposes sponsored by Mayor Patrick H. Hayes. Two, a resolution authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to execute a quick claim deed on an access easement owned by the City of North Little Rock to uh, Bomaceda Group Incorporated and for other purposes sponsored by Mayor Patrick H. Hayes. Three, a resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an easement for the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas to Colson Oil Company Incorporated. Four, a resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an easement from the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas to Sprint Communications Company, LP. Five, an ordinance amending ordinance number 7713 to remove conditions and declaring an emergency. Six, an ordinance vacating and abandoning all utility easements located west of Lot 1, Arena Subdivision in the City of North Little Rock and declaring an emergency. Seven, an ordinance waiving formal bidding requirements for the purchase of parts for the hydro plant declaring an emergency. Eight, an ordinance amending the Master Street Plan Ordinance Number 7178 to allow a collector road with general alignment between Maumel Boulevard and Counts Massey Road declaring an emergency. These are all sponsored by Mayor Hayes, respectfully submitted Mayor Patrick H. Hayes, and this is signed by all eight council members. Would you please read number one? Yes, sir. A resolution authorizing the North Little Rock Electric Department to negotiate a purchase power contract with a wholesale power rate structure providing for a capacity and variable energy charge. And for other purposes. Uh, Move for adoption. There a second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Read number two, please. Yes, sir. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a quick claim deed on an access easement owned by the city of North Little Rock to Bomaceda Group Incorporated and for other purposes. Move for adoption. There a second? Second. On the motion? Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Hype? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Third item, resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an easement from the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas to Sprint Communications Company, LP. We've got an amendment to that, Mayor. I'll move for adoption. All right. Is there a second? Second. Where's your amendment? I think it's the next one. It's I'm sorry. Forward. Well, it's not listening well. All right. Uh, motion made and seconded to amend on the motion. No, 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 no amendment. To adopt. To adopt. To adopt. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, motion made and seconded to adopt on the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Next item. Next item, please. A, res a resolution authorizing the mayor. Well, wait, I already read that. Never mind. No, Go ahead. Three. same deal. This is an ordinance amending ordinance number seven. No, no. Did no, I no. skip three? Really? I think we're on four. Skip three. Skip three. I skipped three. I did skip three. I thought I heard Colson all, but I, maybe I didn't. Hmm. No, we haven't. We skipped that one. Ah, uh, they're numbered wrong on my list. Let's just go ahead and go to this next one. Three. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an easement from the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas to Colson Oil. That's the next one. And now we have an amendment. To okay. Okay, we have an amendment. Yes, we need to substitute Arkansas Terminal and Trading Incorporated where it says uh, Colson Oil Company Incorporated. And I assume that's Alderman Gibson's amendment. Is there a second? Second. On the motion to amend. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? 
Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Move for adoption as amended. Second. On the motion to adopt as amended. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. All right, read whatever next one you want to, Miss Whitby. <laughs> How about an ordinance? That'll work. <laughs> We've done the resolution. <coughs> This is the ordinance amending ordinance number 7713 to remove conditions. First reading. All right, let's go ahead because I think we've got a substitute for that. Uh, if uh, if I could, so I guess let's. We need to amend in the substitute. Yeah, which let's is, go ahead. Has special call amended. Here. Yeah, is that your motion? That's my motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, essentially, what the amendment does is uh, is to change the date. Instead of withdrawing the other purposes or withdrawing the conditions, it simply puts the uh, amends the condition that originally was requiring them to begin construction before the end of this past year, December 31st of 05, and and gives them an additional year uh, uh, instead of removing the conditions. They've gotten the building permit. Uh, we anticipate they'll start construction sometime, if not this month, certainly next month. Uh, uh, with that explanation, uh, on the motion to amend. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ben Rose places on his second reading. Is there a second? Second. On the motion? Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is the ordinance amending ordinance number 7713 to remove conditions. Second reading. Move to uh, Spin Rose places on third reading. Is there a second? Second. Second. On the motion? Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is the ordinance amending ordinance number 7713 to remove conditions. Third and final reading. On the question. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Next item. This is the ordinance vacating and abandoning all utility easements located west of Lot 1 Arena Subdivision in the city of North Little Rock. First reading. Do you have a motion to spend the rules? So moved. Is there second. a second on the motion? Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is the ordinance vacating and abandoning all utility easements located west of Lot 1 Arena Subdivision in the city of North Little Rock. Second reading. Move to suspend. Moved and seconded. Moved by Alderman Barry. Seconded by Alderwoman Robinson on the motion. Gibson? The rules. Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. The ordinance vacating and abandoning all utility easements located west of Lot 1 Arena Subdivision in the city of North Little Rock. Third and final reading. One oh. question. All right. We've got a map here that's got three different, it's got a segment different. one, segment two, and segment three. Uh, Mr. Bowles, come on up to the microphone. <coughs> what we're intending to amend is the one that goes through the new apartment building. It's old Magnolia. I think it's number two on your map. Uh, there's a 15-foot sewer easement that has to be removed for that building to go in. That's segment three. He's segment three. Segment three. Like this yeah. three the one that's okay. Magnolia. So they're, they're wanting to put the large apartment building in that super block. And where Magnolia Street used to be. Where Magnolia was. Okay. We retained an easement. That'll need to be removed. But there's no there's nothing there now? Right. And they're gonna relocate things to the outside of the building. Okay. That's fine. All right, I'll take that as a motion to adopt on third and final. Is there a second? Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Next item. This is the ordinance waiving formal bidding requir requirements for the purchase of parts for the hydro plant. First reading. Second. Is there a second? Motion made and second on the motion. Gibson? 
Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Berry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is an ordinance waiving formal bidding requirements for the purchase of parts for the hydro plant. Second reading. Move to spend rules, place it on third reading. Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Berry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is an ordinance waiving formal bidding requirements for the purchase of parts for the hydro plant. Third and final reading. On the question. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. On the emergency, Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Next item. This is an ordinance amending the Master Street Plan Ordinance Number 7178 to allow a collector road with a general alignment between Maumel Boulevard and Counts Massey Road. First reading. And rules place on second reading. Second. second. On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Pike. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. This is the ordinance amending the Master Street Plan Ordinance Number 7178 to allow a collector road with a general alignment between Maumel Boulevard and Counts Massey Road. Second reading. A, a question: Do are we required to have a, a uh, public hearing on the uh, addition of uh, any changes in the Master Street Plan? I guess that's a question for Mr. Ball. The Planning Commission did hold public hearings, and this was a part of that uh, last year. Um, so. That this has gone through a, a formal process yes, through the planning commission. You can do it here if you wish, uh, but that has that. been done. I, I think we probably, if that's the case, we probably should have included that in the whereas. And I, I guess my amendment is that uh, whereas is mean nothing as to the, the rule, and I think that, that we should put a whereas in here that says that the planning commission conducted public hearings during 2005. And, in, in 2005 and approved this change in the Master Street Plan. Second. Uh, is that your amendment? Motion made and seconded. You got that amendment, Ms. Whitby? Yes, sir. Uh, on the motion to amend. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? <coughs> yes. Thomas? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Pike? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Is there a motion to suspend on the motion? Is there a motion to suspend the rules? To suspend rules and place on the third. Third. third is there a second? Second. On the motion? Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. Switcher? Yes. This is the ordinance amending the Master Street Plan Ordinance Number 7178 to allow a collector road with a general alignment between Maumel Boulevard and Counts Massey Road. Third and final reading. On the question. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Let's go to unfinished business and the regular agenda. Ordinance 0632, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. This is an ordinance amending section 10-201 of the North Rock Municipal related to definitions of animal establishments. Third and final reading. Um, anyone have any questions? Mr. Grace, you want to come up here and really quick tell us what that is? I know there was a question last time. Uh, about what we're doing. This is just basically an attempt to clean up and clarify an ordinance been on the books for a long time to establish some regulatory and enforcement authority. The city attorney's office tells us we need to do this. Any questions? Uh, do I have a motion? Move to spend rules and place it on a second reading. It's actually I been, think it, this is third need to move third. for adoption. Move for adoption. Move for adoption. Motion made and seconded on the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinance 0634, Alderman Gibson? Call it, please. This is an ordinance granting a conditional use for a daycare center in a C3 zone for certain real property located at 2014 Pike Avenue in the city of North Little Rock. Third and final reading. Before we call it, Mayor, I'd, I'd like to call your attention that we did include an amendment last time, which is number five. Good. And I will probably include this. If it's not included in the legislation, I'll include it in every single special use that comes through in the future. And that is that that the occupancy permit will not be issued until all requirements are met. Thank you. That's great. I second that. 
Last time. Moving that so amendment. So I, I, I call for the, uh, it's already been, this is the third time it's read. And it, and it was amended, that amendment so it's was already amended in there. last time. Uh, uh, move for, just move for, for adoption. adoption. I'm trying to get the second. right words out. Motion made and seconded on the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Pipe? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Pipe? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. New business, resolution 0647, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution reappointing Vicki Stevens to the Parks and Recreation Commission. Move for adoption. Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Hype? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Resolution 0648, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution authorizing and approving the sale of certain real estate by the City of North Little Rock to Twin City Bank. Move for adoption. Second. On the motion. Ma Ma Mayor, oh, I, need to, I need to abstain from this because of a very, very small stock ownership. <laughs> On the motion. Gibson. Oh, yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. And Height? Yes. Thank you very much. I note uh, President of Twin City Bank, Mr. Bob Birch, along with Ms. Donna Hardcastle and Tom Steves, also the staff are present. Uh, you know, we are looking forward to uh, uh, addressing uh, the uh, opportunity for the bank to uh, uh, become a permanent fixture, although uh, its fixture uh, has been somewhat permanent in the um, mobile home uh, office. Uh, <laughs> or, I don't know what. Modular office. Okay, modular office facility. It's a house trailer. Uh, <laughs> Manufacturing. And, uh, and, and we also recognize that, uh, that, that while that may be the site that the bank occupies, we are certainly going to work toward uh, maximizing the uh, ability of all of us to create something in that area, uh, indeed, that's special. So thank you, and, uh, and we look forward to moving on as, as the council, all with the exception of Alderman Witcher, uh, because of a conflict with a small share of stock uh, noted. With that, thank you very much. Next item. Resolution 0649, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a first amendment to real estate contract with P&R Properties. Move for adoption. Second. On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Resolution 0650, Mayor Hayes. Uh, please call it. A resolution accepting the construction manager's gross maximum prize for the construction of the Dickey Stevens Baseball Stadium. Do I have a motion? I'll so move. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? This is the this is the firm price except for the exception that was in the given to us in the in the uh, Communication? Communications tonight. Yeah, Mr. Smith, where are you? Come on up to the microphone. Uh, where is that communication tonight? Number five. Number five. Okay, I see it. Uh, that's, that's correct. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the change from what we were aware of when we last communicated the, the fixed price is, uh, is the subsurface uh, down there uh, needed some additional uh, uh, gravel uh, SB2 you know, to, to further stabilize it that increased the price two hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars the uh, contractor found what seventy thousand dollars in uh, in savings so the net effect uh, was you know, a hundred and uh, uh, what forty hundred and forty thousand uh, so the answer, unless Mr. Smith changes my comments, is that that's correct. Now, there could, in, unless there's a change of conditions, which we don't anticipate, uh, that's something that was unforeseeable and that is, fits within that terminology. That's correct. Change the scope of work or unseen conditions would be the only two things that would change the guaranteed maximum price. Once we get out of the dirt, most things are, are pretty easy. But the, the dirt we can't see, we couldn't tell what happened 17 feet down so with that the answer is uh, there there's a motion second any further questions uh, just just one I mean so right now we're looking at a maximum less unless a special condition with the dirt comes up we're looking at a maximum expenditure plus the 
overage that we're working on is of $27.564 million. So there are well, and obviously there's, uh, you know, soft cost is not a good word, but additional cost scoreboard and other things that aren't included in this. But in terms of, of, of get, delivering us a ball field, the answer is that's it. Okay. Just one other question. This, this, this figure here was, was determined after our special election, right? It wasn't determined before the special election. Well, at the time of the special election, you know, we uh, genuinely foresaw uh, about, you know, what we anticipated the cost to be. Uh, Katrina, uh, I mean, it seems like that's become a real victim in terms of, of, of attributing things to, but that and the, and the passage of time, the increase of fuel costs, steel cost is made by a lot of fuel, on and on. Uh, we genuinely expected the ballpark to come in at $28 million. Uh, you know, when when we're coming to this moment, you know, this moment, uh, you know, because of those past conditions, uh, changed what we expected, and that's why we are at the price that we are. And the council is uh, is at least if this this price is exceeded, then the contractor is accepting responsibility. But at the same time, you know, we've got somewhere in the neighborhood of what a million uh, a million two. two. A million two in contingency dollars, so we're hopeful uh, that we can come in for some lot less than what this is. But certainly, we're assured by the guarantee of the contractor that if it's more, then that's their responsibility. Thank you. On the is there any further discussion on the motion? Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Resolution 0651, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a facility study agreement with Entergy Services Incorporated. Do I have a motion? I'm sorry, I, I move for adoption. Second. I, I'm Discussion? I mayor, I need to abstain again. All I'm right. an employee of Energy Services. Is this, what number is this? 50? Yeah, one. 51. Okay. Yeah, stuff. we're going to be amending the next one. I understand that. I'm just I'm trying to keep my. We're asking them then. Asking them to amend the next. I have one. I have to request from Miss Whitby the next time we have seven or eight items on a special call, please number them for me, please. Thank I've you. asked the city attorney's office to do that for us. It's rare that we would have seven or eight, and they got total. I, I total shuffled my stack here. I'll do on, better next time. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. And Height? Yes. Resolution 0652, Mayor Hayes? Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement with the Arkansas Travelers. I move for adoption. And I've got. Second. <laughs> Discussion? Basically, all payments that travelers make to us will be used to, to pay off any above the line cost after it, that, that come in above the sales tax revenues, which we don't know exactly what will be. That's correct. Okay. <coughs> On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Uh, yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Resolution 0653. Yeah, let me just make sure I, I you know, responsive to that. Uh, you know, the, the travelers, the only thing that will be coming out of all of the money generated by the ballpark uh, will be the travelers' operating expenses plus a reserve to get them to the next season's revenue, mm -hmm. which, you know, after the season, uh, they, they won't have, you know, and there might be some uses of the ballpark that would, con would, would, uh, continue with additional revenue, I mean additional income. Uh, after that is taken off, everything will be used to retire the debt until the debt's retired. Both sides. Both sides. Both sides. And then when the debt's return retired, then we go back to the original right. agreement. Right. That's correct. Okay. Have we made a decision on whether we charge for parking or not? Now this council will make that later this year. I just uh, like I just like to say that uh, you know a lot of people have talked to me about this, and and this was what nine out of ten said that we should do and I think it's commendable for the mayor and, and the travelers to to come up with that agreement as quickly as they did and I appreciate it we had to we didn't do it we want to open for the 07 season uh, April 5th is still our target we feel that it's very achievable and uh, and and we're we're marching in that direction and uh, and and so you know everybody you know, continue to plan on being in town and at the ballpark on April the 5th uh, somewhere mid-afternoon thank you on the motion. 
Um, actually, we already voted on we that. We did. One. All right, that's right. I called it back. Next item. Resolution 0653, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement with Finnegan and Associates Incorporated for grant writing and funding services on behalf of the city. Move for adoption. Second. 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 On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Par uh, Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Resolution 0654, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution approving and ratifying a solid waste disposal agreement between the City of North Little Rock, the Pulaski County Regional Waste Management District, the Cities of Sherwood, Jacksonville, and Maumelle, Pulaski County, and Two Pine Landfill, a Division of Waste Management of Arkansas Incorporated. Move for adoption. Second. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, Mr. Sisson, come to the microphone real quick. Uh, I want to help interpretate, uh, help me with an interpretation I gave you some notes on, <coughs> on what I understand the the, uh, the increased cost is going to be we're presently at least has been represented to me paying $20 what's $20 dollars and 86 cents 86, I believe sir right mm -hmm. all right and that and that rate will go to 89 so $20 and 89 cents Twenty dollars and eighty-nine cents, and that will go to twenty-two fifty. Twenty-two fifty. So there's a, a, a consequential increase. We ended our last multi-year contract with waste management management, uh, and uh, and and so this is a new contract. Uh, the cost will increase by the CPI, uh, and uh, and and while it's not, it's greater, obviously greater, a uh, greater increase than what we uh, uh, would normally like to expect. It's something that. Uh, you know, we certainly feel at this point is uh, is uh, the, you know the best in the market, which is the market's not very big. Little Rock and BFI are the only other two that are available, and I don't know that Little Rock is uh, is is retailing it. Uh, yeah, that's a, uh, between the seven and eight percent, which is uh, is. A <coughs> but that's how much is that? How much is that cost increase for the year? We we how much total we delivered. Uh, be three hundred ninety thousand to to two pine last year. So seven percent is going to be another twenty one twenty two thousand. Twenty one twenty two thousand. Twenty twenty four thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, and and you know we're we're uh, you know that's that's costs that aren't passed along. Yes. On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Resolution 0655, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution authorizing extension of insurance coverage from Ramsey, Crook, Farrell, and Lensing for com comprehensive loss and business interruption insurance for the Murray Hydroelectric Plant. Move for adoption. Second. Uh, I guess there's a typo correction then in the agenda. It says plan. Um, yes, that was that was corrected. Your revised version has the correction. Thank you. My I'm, proof I'm reader, going by my old one. Well, my proofreader didn't prove very well. So that's the city clerk's mistake. It's it's a it's a mistake involving my proofreader. <laughs> Who's in your office? Who's in my office? On the motion. <laughs> Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Resolution 0656, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution appropriating funds for expenses related to the Plum Point and Big Cajun projects. We need to amend this. Yeah, one. let's go ahead and move for adoption. You're right. Move for adoption. Second. On now. the motion, uh, no, not on the motion. Uh, uh, what's your amendment? Sorry. The amended R0656, which uh, uh, refers to basically just the big Cajun project. And reduces the funds in half. No, no, this one is this one. The other one was 150. This, this, yeah, this one is, is 75,000. Right. Yes. Right. Yes, it reduces in half. All right, so on the motion to amend. That was the motion to amend? Please. It was to substitute Please. second? Okay. Yeah, he can, uh, there's a, you don't have a copy of that? I do. Okay. I didn't have the motions. Yeah, motion made and seconded uh, amend and to uh, amend by the substitution of uh, what you have. You just amend the whole thing, Mayor. Right. Because okay. right. it, it takes out. the whereases and all of that, yeah. Okay. Takes out all the plum points. Gibson? Vote yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Let me just briefly explain that. Uh, uh, you know, subsequent to us filing this legislation, uh, we learned that the cost associated with Plum Point 
were, were going to be or could be, and, and we chose to do that, capitalized in terms of the ultimate borrowing that uh, the uh, uh, Missouri Joint Action Agency would do. So uh, they were both less than uh, the 75 cap uh, as well as the fact that well, not as well as necessarily, the fact that they were going to be capitalized. So that was the reason that we were able to remove Plum Point, the cost attributed to Plum Point uh, from this legislation. So the total legislation, is, uh, as you now have it, simply refers to 75000 for expenses related to the pursuing of the uh, opportunity to acquire power from Big Cajun, the Louisiana plant. Uh, uh, with that on the motion? We need a motion to adopt right, this Is there amendment. a motion then? To adopt as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. On the motion? Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. Resolution 0657, Alderman Thomas? I'm going to hold that to see what happens later here. In the Let's go to ordinances. Ordinance 0636, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. This is the ordinance amending. Ordinance number 7803 to change and ratify the effective date of the electric rate increase. First reading. So the spin rule is placed on a second reading. On the mo uh, is there a second? Second. On the motion? Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Hyde? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is the ordinance amending ordinance number 7803 to change and ratify the effective date of the electric rate increase. Second reading. Motion. I'll make that motion. I got a question to ask after All right, we is there get a second? Second down the way. Motion made and second. Let's spend the rules, and then we'll ask a question. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This Which is question? The ordinance amending oh, I'm sorry. Ordinance. I Go ahead. I was trying to do a, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was trying to do a timetable in my mind. Okay. I know this is what we voted on, and so we probably don't need to do any amendments to this because this ratifies a voice vote we made, and that's what we need to do because that's what it says we're doing. Yes. Okay. This is the ordinance amending ordinance number 7803 to change and ratify the effective date of the electric rate increase. Third and final reading. On the question. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? No. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? No. On the emergency, Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? No. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Next item, Ordinance 0637, Mayor, uh, Alderman Gibson. Call it and, and hold it. Read it once. Read it once, please. This is the ordinance repealing ordinance number 7803 and amending electric rates for the North Rock Electric Department customers. First reading. Next item. Ordinance 0638, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. This is the ordinance establishing job, job classifications and numbers of employees for each department of the city government of North Little Rock for the year 2006. First reading. I have a motion. Rules. I'll make the motion. I mean, I'll make the motion to spin the Thank rules, and right. I need someone to explain a couple All of right, those Mr. come on up here, and let's vote on that suspension, uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Whitley. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Let's go ahead and read it, and then we'll talk about it. This is an ordinance establishing job classifications and numbers of employees for each department of the city government of North Little Rock for the year 2006. Second reading. All right. What you, uh, Mr. Sisson, give us a summary and uh, answer any questions any council member has, please. As most of you knew, know, after we pass the budget, we bring an ordinance in to change the jobs that we put in the budget. There are just a few of them in this, this one this time. I can go each one of them or answer any questions that anybody would have to have. The first one that may come to wear, and I won't, I'll only cover that, the airport is a complete new section, but we want to make the airport uh, employee, department head, and a part-time employee as a <coughs> city, city department, so we we'll, can have a little bit more control over the who's appointed and things like that. Supervision, right. All of these were in the budget, though? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that right. answers my question. Yeah, I, I don't, I can be happy to address any of them if you, if you would like me to, but I, 
The question about the airport. One minute. Oh, are we just wiping the slate clean out there? I'm going to start all over with the air, with the department head, right? Uh, she resigned, and uh, and then we had another lady for a little while, and she resigned, and Mr. Smith, uh, Joe, has been sort of uh, a part acting as a uh, manager. So we are now bringing somebody back that can help us full time. Okay. And what about the airport commission? Excuse me. What about the airport commission? Has it been disbanded, and we're going to start? Okay. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Any further questions on the, uh, do we have a motion in front of us? I think we need to move, suspend the rules. That's right. Move the suspend the rules and place it on third reading. There's okay. a second by Alderman Gibson on the motion to suspend the rules. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is the ordinance establishing job classifications and numbers of employees for each department of the city government of North Little Rock for the year 2006, third and final reading. On the question. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Berry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. And the emergency Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Berry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinance 0639, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. This is an ordinance locating an abandoning utility easement located on lots two and three, block two of North Commercial Subdivision in the city of North Little Rock. First reading. We were spending rules in place on the second reading. Second. 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 On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. This is an ordinance vacating and abandoning utility easement located on lots two and three, block two of North Commercial Subdivision in the city of North Little Rock, second reading. Question. Go ahead and state your question. Well, Joe, can we take those uh, charts off the uh, walls since we're sort of finished with that? I thought we'd already done this. Uh, Mr. Walls? I don't think we have. It was hell, I believe. Uh, this is the one that's behind where the Harley Davidson is. There's a, a building next door had been enlarged many years ago. There's an easement there under the building, never used. Uh, they're wanting to transfer the property. It's a cloud on the property. And I think it was held last time. That's why it couldn't here. have been held because we don't um, sure we did anything. Right. No. It was it was amended last time, and Mr. Carter said that it the way that it was amended, it basically made it ineffective. I, I put in the amendment because okay. we right. and then we're having to bring the piece of legislation back right. because it put a cloud on the title when there's right. no there's no Alderman Barry was right we have dealt with it before we, we didn't deal with it in the right way that's right you're right I messed up oh, move spin rules place on third reading what's the motion it's been read twice. Okay, so, so, is there a so second? that's correct. Second yeah. on the motion to put on third and final, uh, Ms. Whitby, or we, we, we did. He said no. He said no. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. This is the ordinance vacating and abandoning utility easement located on lots two and three, block two of North Commercial Subdivision in the city of North Little Rock, third and final reading. On the question. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinance 0640, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. This is an ordinance vacating and abandoning an alley located between Magnolia and Poplar Street in the city of North Little Rock, First Street. Motion by Alderman Barry, second by Alderman Gibson on the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. Yes. This is the ordinance vacating and abandoning an alley located between Magnolia and Poplar Street in the city of North Little Rock. Second reading. I have a motion. Move suspend rules and place it on third reading. Second. On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is the ordinance vacating and abandoning an alley located between Magnolia and Poplar Streets in the city of North Rock. Third and final reading. On the question. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. 
Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Gray? Yes. Parker? Yes. Hype? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. And the emergency Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Hype? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinance 641, Alderwoman Robinson. Please call it. This is an ordinance reclassifying certain property located at 1762 Moss Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from R3 to planned use development to allow commercial retail by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Little Rock, first reading. Move to suspend the rules in place on the second reading. And I'll second. On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. This is an ordinance reclassifying certain property located at 1762 Moss Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from R3 to plan use development to allow commercial retail by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Little Rock. Second reading. Move to suspend the rules in place on the third reading. Second. On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. This is an ordinance reclassifying certain property located at 1762 Moss Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from R3 to plan use development to allow commercial retail by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Little Rock, third and final reading. On the question. Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. On the emergency, Gibson. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Parker. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Ordinance 0642, Alderwoman Robinson. Please call it. This is an ordinance to reclassify certain property located at 716 East 2nd Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from the present C5 to R2 classification by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Little Rock, first reading. Move to suspend the rules in place on the second reading. Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is an ordinance to reclassify certain property located at 716 East 2nd Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from the present C5 to R2 classification by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Little Rock. Second reading. Move to suspend the rules and place it on the third reading. Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is an ordinance to reclassify certain property located at 716 East 2nd Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from the present C5 to R2 classification by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Little Rock, third and final reading. On the question. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Concludes new business. Hey, council member. I've got a couple of things. I need to, it's going to take me a second to get them ready. Hello. Great meeting today with Habitat for Humanity in regard to a facility they opened up in the old. Uh, Magic March store in Pike Plaza, uh, and they have a. I'll, I'll pass out this brochure. We're always looking for a place to carry you good use furniture, uh, leftover building materials, etc. Uh, just give you a copy of this basically that tells you what they will take and what they will not take. They will come get them, they use that money, they use this material to resale. Uh, not basically use in their buildings, but to resell it, and they take that money to uh, buy materials to build new houses. That's I had a chance to join the first lady in uh, in, in uh, opening, helping open, cut the ribbon on that facility. There are real bargains down there too. Uh, there are vendors who donate different kinds of brand new equipment uh, in addition to furniture. Uh, I know they had some. Uh, motorized uh, blower machines uh, that were roughly half of what you could buy one new and they were brand new items so I commend Alderman Gibson for bringing that to our attention and encourage uh, any of you both for new and used uh, both in purchasing and donating uh, this is a terrific place to do that now that's the good news now I'll tell you the bad news I had the opportunity this weekend to uh, along with Mr. Parker dragging me out at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning to do a litter index of the city and 
I scribbled more notes on my side pad than I wrote on my list. They kind of got, uh, we couldn't talk to each other. That was very difficult to do when you get eight people in a van. But uh, I talked to Code today. I am amazed at the number of tires that are just laying around this, this city. They're not stacked out on the street, but they're laying up in front yards or side yards or on vacant lots. And I'm not sure we have anything on the books to handle those. That's number one I want to look at. And the second thing that's becoming a real problem in our ward is the people who choose to make a driveway where there's really not a driveway. And we're having extreme amount of damage to the curbs. And uh, I probably will request that the city attorney draft an ordinance that says you will enter your piece of property at a designated driveway uh, and hold a public hearing on that. And uh, I'm just amazed at the amount of people that are, are damaging the uh, horizontal curbs that we have out there. It's not quite a problem with the roll curbs, but the horizontal curbs, it's amazing how much they're tearing them up. And other than that, uh, I've never seen so many garbage cans on the street on a Saturday morning when there's no pickup until Monday. Any other council member? Let me just make a comment. I, yesterday I took advantage of the gorgeous weather and went down to the river trail and rode my bicycle. As did, a, and there was about, I've never seen so many people on a Sunday afternoon on the river trail yesterday. We have created a pleasant monster down there. There's a number of people coming from all over central Arkansas mm -hmm. to utilize our diamond uh, <laughs> along the side of the river there. And, but one of the things that was brought to my attention, and it's not the first time it's been brought to my attention, is, is we need to do something to remind people of what the etiquette is on the trail, whether you be walking, whether you be running, whether you be riding your bicycle, or whether you be riding your horse down there on the river trail. Better not be riding your horse. Well, not there not. was. <laughs> I reminded that person that the equestrian trail was over on the other side of Burns Park, but anyway, what what we what, what's happening down there is that people there's nothing to remind them to stay to the right of the trail whether it depend on the direction they're going, and there was uh, there was several groups of people yesterday just stopped on the little wooden bridge uh, that uh, goes from basically from the Burns Park launching ramp over to uh, uh, the other side of uh, that little small bio there I forget the name of it. Anyway, I, I, I know that this, we've discussed in the past the possibility of striping the trail. Uh, uh, there's also been mention of maybe a suggestion that we position a, uh, a, a, one of the Parks and Rec uh, employees down there on, uh, on maybe Saturdays or Sundays uh, reminding people that, uh, what the etiquette is on the trail. But uh, we have, I mean, we, there's a lot of people using the trail, and when that new bridge is uh, uh, constructed and goes over the lock and dam, there's going to be people that are going to be stopped on the top of that bridge uh, looking uh, east and west along the river and uh, several bikers and, and uh, pedestrians are going to wind up colliding up there. I just just want to remind you, Mayor, that uh, we have created a problem down there and, it's, and, and the, the uh, question of safety on the trail, no matter what you're doing down there, is uh, come into question. So, Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're, you're probably right, uh, and, and I know there are ongoing discussions about that, and, uh, and I think we need to put uh, some another a list of rules uh, in several different places, but I'll work with Parks and Recreation and see if we can find a way to try to disseminate that information better, but I'm sure there's some things that we need to decide, for example, that wooden bridge, you know, whether or not to permit uh, people to stop on that. Now, right now, I don't think there's any rule against that. It's not. The, so there the, needs to be some discussion. We'll figure out how it would be the best way to, to propose some uh, guidelines and to the extent that there's debate on rules, we need to go through that, try to see what would be the best way to maintain the most uh, beneficial use of that trail. One final thing, uh, unless you're finished, and that's that the dedication of the bridge, I believe, is going to be the last weekend in May. No, excuse me, September, the last weekend in September. Uh, so just as a general as a general time frame, uh, the, uh, there's one piece of foundation, one pillar that's left to, to be constructed. They're well on time, and, uh, and we very much anticipate that thing opening. Uh, well, the formal opening should be the last weekend in September. And I've heard also the first weekend in October. Well, it, there was discussion about the first weekend in October, and obviously, again, the announcement needs to come out of the county judge's office. He's the one that is planning it, but the, uh, there was 
talk of that, but the race for the cure is that weekend. So it was re, re, uh, recalculated. You know, recalculated, and, and that's what I've heard. But any event, last of September, 1st of October uh, is what the uh, schedule would be, and, and the county judge obviously again has a final say so, but that's the neighborhood. Okay. Two, Mayor, two quick items. Uh, on April Thursday, April the 20th, the Arkansas Ethics Commission will be conducting a session for anyone who's interested in running in this election cycle regarding finances and disclosure laws, and you can contact their office uh, for that information. And also, the American Heart Association has its heart walk on April the 22nd. And for more information on that, I think you can contact Maddie Taylor at uh, 340-5319. Uh, and then we always want to call attention to our city clerk helping us remind of different things that are going in the community. The North Little Rock Lions Club Fish Fry is April the 28th. Citywide cleanup is May the 6th. I know we've got another meeting between now and then, but uh, folks might want to put those two items on their calendar. I have a question. Uh, Alderman Gibson said you were driving around in the city Saturday in the city van. I was riding, riding around in the riding city Riding around in a the keep arkansas beautiful is that it's uh keep north Little rock beautiful organization rock organization a... and it was a uh, a funded operation by somebody and there were like 32 of us i guess in four vans or somewhere close to that well the reason i ask is that the city van that says administration was on my street so i thought maybe i had a witness to my yard work and my back damage oh because they drove up my street and I thought that was odd that the city van was on my street on Saturday morning they so that dance. explained it if it was them but it's not them so now I still don't know mayor do you mind if I explain to the general public and have, have yourself, our city clerk you. what was going on this past Saturday we have a organization that's that's sort of a um, it's independent of the city government it's a citizen group that has uh, come together to form an affiliation with Keep America Beautiful, and we call it uh, Keep North Little Rock Beautiful, which is a subgroup of Keep Arkansas Beautiful. Let's keep it all beautiful, but especially here in North Little Rock. And establishment of this organization, one of the requirements is, is that we do what they call a litter index, where we go and divide the city into quadrants, and take vans with groups of citizens and tour our city in a organized fashion and grade our litter problem on a scale of one to four. Alderman Gibson volunteered to go with one of those groups, as did I, and we determined what the level of problems were throughout our entire city by strategically reviewing streets within the entire city, not just one segment of the city, but the entire city. And f from the results that we achieved on this survey, we will be able to compare the progress in the future because we will do the same survey again next year. And in the meantime, we will hopefully be able to offer suggestions as to how we can keep North Little Rock beautiful and keep it more beautiful by keeping it clean of litter. The, uh, we've yet to offer any suggestions on how to do that. This was simply an establishment of, of where our problems lie and trying to address just how bad and how severe the litter problem is in North Little Rock. But uh, we, as the mayor alluded to, we are going to have a cleanup campaign again this year. I think it's May 6th. And we're looking for volunteers of organizations and individuals to participate in that. So, any other council member? Microphones open uh, to the community uh, public. Oh, what other thing? Speaking of uh, filings and uh, announcements, I think we might have one of our council members that might want to announce. No, we don't need to get into any <laughs> public, public comment section. Uh, the microphone's open. Anyone want to address the? Uh, council in the community, uh, state your name and make your comment, please. Well, here I am again. I'm still Patricia Harris, or Miss Pat, the police department calls me. I'm glad you brought up about city cleanup 
512 Maine is participating in this. The volunteers are going to do the sacking this year. We could use some volunteers about that. Um, and hopefully next year we'll have just as big a park a lot since uh, we will be moving. Mr. Crony is rooting us out of our, our police station. So we're looking for another one that, uh, oh, maybe 615 Maple, put a sign up and say Main Street this way. Needless to say, you're talking about uh, litter. The garbage men that pick up, they stroll. They don't pick up. They, instead of returning the cans back to the station where they, I come home in the afternoon and I have, um, well, really and truly might have Bobby Taylor's. He lives half block up on another street and I might have his garbage can in my street. I mean, it's nothing from the set them in the street instead of sending them back into the yard where if there's a storm comes up and rain, they're out rolling the streets, and which is very dangerous. Another thing, we would like to know when the Morgan 10 Cup is going to leave from Boyer and uh, Middle Street. It is in shambles. People are going up there and um, picking up whatever falls off of it. The yard, the yard that came out and made a tent of mowing it, but they've got a sand pile out there that's full of fleas. They've got uh, bricks that are falling off and they're just everywhere. It really needs to be cleaned up. I just want to make one comment. Uh, I know uh, many times the wind blows those garbage cans, but I have a lot of people in our neighborhood are really proud of the way that the garbage people pick up the garbage, and and I, have, well, I'm, you know, I very seldom have any complaint on that. Really, they're really generous to me on everything because I do have a handicap. They are, and they always put they always put my can back where it should be, but. The other afternoon when the wind was gusted up, I come home, there was three cans in my second driveway. Well, and I would agree with Alderman Thomas. There have been several times in the last, uh, the last two to four weeks that the wind has been exceptionally uh, heavy. And I know I have uh, moved the plastic, excuse me, I've moved the, pat, I've moved the plastic trash cans off out of the street. One, I had to dodge because it was being blown down the street. So while I, I can't uh, you know, say exactly what the nature is, I know that, that at least on several occasions I've seen you know, uh, garbage cans, plastic principally, that have been in the street and rolling down the street. And, and obviously, again, that's no fault of our sanitation workers. I know I would agree with Alderman Thomas. Uh, we, by far and away, get compliments on the the dedication and the and the, uh, the the work that they have to do. So, you know, we'll certainly take those comments uh, at hand. And I, I know asked, uh, Harold Ford, who is the director of sanitation, is listening to this. And and we sure don't. We sure at least want to put them back where we got them. Last Monday, uh, I was a little bit late going to my volunteer job, and I noticed we must have had some new workers on the truck. Because instead of putting the cans back in the yard, they just sent them on, on the edge of the street. Alderman so, Thomas. Uh, one of the things uh, and that I have a problem with, two people leave for work, uh, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, and they don't get back till 5 or 6. Well, the wind catches them, and, and they go out in the street. So uh, I, I pick up a lot of those and, uh, and carts from the, from the stores and different things that the wind blows out there. But... But and uh, uh, as a whole, I get a lot of compliments on the way they do the uh, pickup in our neighborhood. <clears throat> well, when you actually are standing there watching, then it's you know what uh, you know. We just get in a hurry sometimes, and if um, somebody has uh, maybe a milk carton and milk and whatever, they strew it all over the street. I had to get out 
and take my water hose and I encourage two of my neighbors to get out and clean their front of their street up too. So we all we all have to do our part. But um, I think I think sometimes we get in too big a rush. And have you noticed the Walmart sacks that are in the trees on the lines? Have you noticed the tennis shoes that are hanging on our electric lines and I think I've made about three calls to the electric company to let them know there's tennis shoes hanging over the lines but but all in all my kids want me to move to the farm but I'd like to stay right exactly where I'm at well, we would like that too Miss Harris Okay, thank you. Mayor, I'd like to thank uh, our sanitation director publicly, Mr. Harold Ford, one of the individuals that uh, I see at least once a month, tells me what a great job he's doing. Julius Griggs, so I want to publicly thank you on his behalf, Harold. Doing a great job. Thank you. Oh, there's a, uh, another while we were dealing with sanitation. Uh, Alderman Gibson had asked about the tires. I know from talking to Harold because he's came and got some from me. If you call the sanitation department, they will come and pick up your tires. And and Mr. Alessandro, I don't know what you're going to say, but you can add this to your list: the hours of Funland. I know that it is now open on at least on weekends <laughs> uh, because I patronized it last uh, Sunday afternoon with granddaughter number one, and granddaughter number one and two will shortly be. Uh, granddaughter number two will shortly be added to the to the list. So you want to give us the hours that fun open? Right now, Mayor, it's just open on the weekends. Uh, that schools out in the hours. What hours expanded. are it open? I'm not, I'm not real sure what hours. I know on, on Friday and they're open uh, like from uh, five o'clock to uh, about eight o'clock on Fridays. They're open on like from twelve o'clock to about seven o'clock on Saturdays. And about one o'clock to five o'clock on Sundays also. Well, if you need the exact right. times, you know, you know, they should be on the <coughs> website or on the right. park site. But right. yeah, I can I can tell you that it's open. And I would second Alderman Heights' comments about the trail. Uh, there were a lot of folks that were at Funland Sunday afternoon. Sure. All right, Mr. Ellison. Well, speaking of granddaughters, I'm Will Ellison, I'm the Park Maintenance Superintendent for North Rock Parks and Rec. And I wanted to bring up also let the council know, Go ahead and let tell the mayor me know. Name. Go ahead and tell everybody your name. I thought I did. Will Elizondo. Did he? I didn't hear. I was too busy talking. <laughs> I'm probably talking too fast, Mayor. But anyway, this uh, this Saturday is a Burn Park Easter egg hunt for all the kids, for the audience, for the listening audience on TV also. But of course, we want to invite everybody to come out for the Easter egg hunt. It's going to be Saturday morning from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. I want to make sure everybody was aware of that, Mayor. And yes, you're right about the trails and, and the Burns Park. As we talked about this morning, the park has been full. We've had some big soccer tournaments there, big tennis tournaments there. And uh, people are really utilizing the park, enjoying the weather, and coming out. And I know I too rode can... a bicycle Sunday morning, and at 8:30, those soccer fields were full of, uh, of folks playing uh, soccer, almost all of them. So well, let, let me say this about the soccer tournament: I assisted in parking 1,000 yeah. automobiles <laughs> right. Saturday out morning there. out there at five dollars a pop. So. Right, you were out there. <laughs> but I just want to pass it on, Mayor. Thank you. Good evening again. I'm Jim Ard. Council members, I've requested from MEMS, which y'all voted in for another contract, four times a copy of the bill they billed my mother's insurance. I have not received that. I think we should be able to receive what MEMS bills the insurance. As one person told me, they wonder if any hanky panky's going on. I surely hope not. But I've asked them four times. I left words with Reverend Thompson today copy of the bills and when they picked her up I haven't received it yet maybe mayor you can put a bug in his ear again like you did last time thank you, thank you. yeah my name is Matthew Richard I live here in Argenta uh, just for those keeping score at home I thought I would make sure it was clear to people that today there were uh, new ordinance, a new new business. There were seven ordinances, and there were four on a special call. So there were eleven new ordinances today. Every one of them, except one, was read 
three times had an emergency clause and was passed all in the same night. The only one that was read once and that was it was the repeal of the rate increase on the, on the electric rates. So, you know, we, we had about 238 yay votes here and only two or three no votes. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. And uh, so I hope we all know what's going on and where it's going on because we sure don't have a chance to do much about it now. Thank you. Microphone's still open. Do I have a motion? So On the motion to adjourn. Gibson? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Parker? Yes. Hi. Conflict of interest. I can't vote. Here from the engineers. Don't. 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 Don't.